anyway, I would like to show you a diagram I made of the female vagina. And, um, if you look here, here's your belly button. We all know where that is. And then right here, it's the butthole. I mean, I don't really think I need to show you guys where that is. Um, but like I was saying, the butthole is in the back. We're talking about the front three parts here. Um, so your belly button. When you go directly down, you're going to have a lot of pelvic like here. And it's basically from like your hips towards the middle and down is where it starts to grow. And it can actually grow all over your vagina down there in certain parts. And um, I just didn't cover it all because you have to see where the other parts are. So I just have the hair right up here towards like the thigh and like the top part. Um, so when you start to go down, these sections here that are white, um, and I just drew this according to my skin color because different ethnicities, um, even if you're like darker skinned, um, your vagina might actually be a little lighter down there, I'm guessing. But um, as far as me, I'm just drawing it the same color, obviously, as my skin color white here on the board. But um, these would actually be your um, your labia but your vagina lips let's call them lips in the video your lips so here are your lips on both sides and it's actually um, drawn open but if you look at your vagina when um, you take off your pants you'll see that most times it's closed together and it makes like a little like a little cup of skin and then there's a line down the middle but those are your lips separated and um, even if they're not like together most of the times when you look down there they'll be opened up at the bottom and kind of like a little bit out and um um, you know, if you're first looking down there and you're starting to explore on yourself and finding out different stuff about yourself, you're not going to look like everybody else. So don't compare yourself to other people, and especially when it comes to periods and how you look everywhere, especially down there. I mean, when it comes to the vagina and the lips, people's can be short, they can be really long, um, they can be kind of fat or like thick, or some people's can be like, like I said, really long, but uh, thin and lanky, like flimsy. So um, just... Don't compare yourself because everybody's going to be different. If, you know, you end up changing in front of your best friend, you know, usually when you're younger, and you guys are, like, comparing, and you're like, why does yours look like that? Um, just because that's how God made you. So, um, so anyways, you have your pubic hair, um, your lips, and right at the tip of where your lips start, and kind of, like, right when it starts to separate, there's this little bump of skin there. And I don't know if anybody's ever told you, but that is called your clitoris. And if you take your two fingers and you put it on the sides of that little bump, it kind of sticks out like a button. And what it is is like a little piece of skin sticking out with like a little line in it. And it's kind of hard to describe. It's kind of shaped like a tornado twist of skin. Almost like if you see somebody, I have any belly button, but if you see somebody that has an Audi belly button, you know how it kind of has those twists and swirls, like, and you kind of just wonder where it goes. It's not really a hole, but it's kind of like a little line, you just wonder where it trails off to. That's kind of what your clitoris is, okay? Um, so you have your pubic hair, your clitoris, and your lips kind of forming at one. So it's kind of like a teepee right here. If this is where it would, if this is where it, tore, it would be open, um, and when you go down, there's like this little part of skin that kind of starts um, curving downward, and as you curve downward like a funnel, there's a big hole. And that big hole down there is your vagina. And in your vagina, where that hole is, that's where the blood comes out for the blood flow for when you have your periods, okay? And um, in that big hole, there's going to be a littler hole up farther. It's kind of like below your clit, but above your vagina. There's a little tiny hole, and that's where your pee comes out of. So that's a pee hole, and that's called your urethra. So we got your belly button, your pubic hair, your clitoris, your labia, your vagina lips, um, your pee hole, your urethra, and your vagina. Alright? So that's that. And let me see. I was actually going to show you this too. Um, when you have a pad in your underwear, per se, and let's say you didn't have like money to get some tampons, so you're all out or whatever, and all you got is pads. And maybe you even got one pad for the day, right? Because your mom's got to go buy you some more pads, tampons. Um, if you have little liners that you buy, you can stick them over your pad. And even if you're having a light period or even a heavy one, you can just keep replacing them and stick them off and you'll have a good pad. Because usually they tell you to change your pad every four to eight hours. I would say every three to four hours, just for cleanly purposes and smell, because when you have your period, you will go dif through different types of odors. Um, I'm just telling you, it's normal. You can also expect it. But, um, you can take, um little liners and put them on and just discard them. Otherwise, if you don't even have a pad, 
and for some reason you don't have tampons, and let's say like in the middle of the month you're not supposed to get your period, but you get it like two weeks early or some shit, right? Um, this is where this comes in handy. If, well, don't worry about anything else in here, but um, if you have on you, or even if you're around somebody or a kitchen where there's a fucking paper towel, and even you, you, you can even do this in the bathroom um, of a stall at school or your friend's house if you don't have paper towel around. You take a paper towel, um, you know, this is kind of a big piece. It's like four skinny pieces together, but actually, um, just, you know, kind of start folding around. You can fold it till you get it to a square, and you can place it on your pad, and you can just wear it. Or if you think it's going to fall out for whatever reason, put it on your pad, right? Or if you don't have a pad, put it on your underwear, right? And then take toilet paper and wrap it around. You can do it like two or three times. And if you do it twice, just um, take the end piece that's up for the second time and put it under the first piece. Or if it's, you know, three times, take the end of the toilet paper and put it under the second um, time that you put it around. Or the first one. Whatever works. Just to keep it intact. That's just like a little trick. Um, and basically, um, before I get off the tampons, this right here is actually a makeup bag, and my mom gave it to me, but this comes in handy. Like, you can use this as a little period bag, okay? So, if you got, like, tampons and pads, and it's your period, and you're going to go to school, and you don't want them, like, flying all around in your purse or your backpack, get one of these. And, I mean, you can even get one that's, like, uh, really thick, so it's not see-through, so you can't see through it. And when you do go to the bathroom, just open it up, you know, when it's all in here. You've got your tampon, you've got your pad, and if you want, get a little plastic bag filled with wipes. Um, and these are just generally used just to wipe yourself up and make it easier to clean up because um, sometimes, depending on how long blood's been on you, um, if you haven't had a tampon, or even if it leaks through the tampon and it's going on the pad and getting on you, you can you know, wipe yourself up with these. And also, this is um, not scented, but if you want, you can get scented um, wipes and kind of clean yourself up and give yourself an extra little freshness down there, if you know what I mean. And also, if you keep the bag, um, depending on how many wipes you have in there, and you really don't want to, like, throw away your pad wrappers or your old pads or your tampons in the school garbage, or if you're at a boy's house, you don't want them to, like, see their garbage and be like, oh my gosh, you totally wrapped up a pad and just put it in my garbage. Like, not that they're going to do that, but if you've ever thought about that, you can just stick it back in your bag and take it home and throw it away later. You know what I'm saying? Um, but with these wipes and pads and tampons that you might have in your little bag, it's essential, I think. I mean, I wouldn't say that I was so much older, full on my periods, you know, and just the, the smells range. You can, some people say they smell like french fries, shrimp, and fish, or burgers. It's like ridiculous things that they say. Um, I mostly think it's more like an earthly, musty smell. Um, and also, it can be more metally because of the blood iron in it. But um, anyways... Even if you don't, like, stink, which you probably might, you know, sometime throughout it, um, you can keep little tiny perfumes in here. You know what I'm saying? Like the little com compactable trial size ones. You don't have to have the big old bath and bodies lugging it around, you know, be like, shh, 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 you can just have the little ones in here. And it's just, it saves a lot more room, and it's just in your bag, and it's ready to go, and it's good. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. And I am going to show you some examples of underwears, what to wear, what not to wear when you're on your rag, okay? So, um, this one, that was the example underwear. I'm going to just put this back in the bag. This is more like a boy short, but it's really tight, and being tight doesn't mean that that's bad. Like, it's still flexible, but it's tight, so it keeps your flow and your pad and your tampon to yourself. You don't really want something that's so loose because you feel like it's just going to fall off and sometimes it has fallen off. That's why I recommend if you do have pads and you're in school and you're in athletics or for whatever reason you don't want shit flying all around, you know, if you're running and you're in track and shit, get fucking pads with wings that clip um, the wings. They would uh, come up here, right? And you can just wrap them at the bottom and it sticks. So um, that's something good. But um, so like I'm saying, this is like a boy short and it's, you know, contour to your body, so that's kind of good. Um, these ones, they're just for show. I mean, they're stretchy and they're cute, but if you look at the back, where are you supposed to put a fucking pad here? Nowhere. You all, you gotta wear a tampon, you know what I'm saying? And these are like pussy huggers. They, they're tight, and that's not comfortable for when you're on your period, because when you're on the period, most people get bloated, you know what I'm saying? And every little thing 
just might tick you off. So you just want something that's flexible or comfortable in whatever way that is you.